Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my development diary for the game, Stormbreak. Something, something about characters, or whatever. I would noticed something rather weird while I was researching game development techniques prior to starting development of this game. It seemed as though a lot of developers, and this is true for creators of both video games and other visual media such as comic books, they seem to go and develop the characters first. And by develop the characters, I mean visually. Somebody sits down as step number one, pencil and paper, and sketches out a character design. That character design is then handed off to a scenario writer who writes something resembling the story to the game. This seemed kind of strange to me, because it seems like you're fitting the story around the character design rather than fitting the character into the story or shaping everything around each other. So what I decided to do is do something different. Now, don't get me wrong, I think I understand why they do that. Unless I've been misinformed and this doesn't really happen as often as I think it does. They do that probably because you have a large team and a lot of people have to work together and there needs to be certain parallel developments and certain things achieved before other things or whatever. I am not a large team, I am one person. So I didn't feel the need to do any kind of weird stuff like that. So what I did is I sat down and I wrote the script out first. Introduced the characters as I saw, as I saw fit in the story to keep things moving along and at the moments that I thought was the most appropriate. When I was done developing the script, I then had an idea in my head of what I wanted them to look like, or what I thought they should look like in the story. So then I used those mental portraits I had of them, and created virtual ones, which I could have on the screen right now. These are the characters here, with some exceptions, <laughs> that I think are the most appropriate for the story that I've written. Now I just want to go into a little bit about the characters that we're looking at here, and why I uh, decided to do it this way. Now we've all seen the character of Ansel Holloway before. He is probably, um, the you could say he is the most important character in the story if you want, I wouldn't. There are actually three main characters. Characters, when I say main characters, I mean the, cane, the characters that the camera will follow around. The camera doesn't exist in a place unless one of those three characters is present, and the other characters will follow them. Ansel was the first one created, as he was the first one I'd written in the script. And he is somewhat atypical of the kind of character that you'd see in one of these Japanese-inspired role-playing games. For a few reasons. For one thing, he's a little bit older than you would expect. Usually in these games, especially in the Japanese developed ones, these characters are ranging anywhere from their very early 20s down to absurdly low numbers like 7 or 8 years old. And the reason why they do that kind of thing is because they want to have a character with a rather obvious character arc of becoming older and overcoming the challenges like you are not a badass at 10 years old. I don't care who the hell you think you are. You're not. And that uh, character has to go through that and then become a stronger person. The character arc they have to go through. Western developed stuff doesn't always feel the need to do that. And I don't think you really need to either. Character doesn't have to be young in order to have a character arc. And I'm definitely going with that idea myself. Ansel is 35. He's in his mid-30s during this game. He's definitely older than the average, and he's actually, in his line of work, actually kind of coming up to the point where he's thinking about retirement. Also, rather atypical of a lead character in a game like this, he doesn't use a sword. Now, most people have this kind of romanticized concept of a sword as being this sort of like, I guess I'll, uh, kind of not quite historically accurate uh, perspective of the way swords worked or the way swords were used in battle and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that probably comes from like 
Arthurian legend or that kind of stuff. Knights of the Round Table, holding your swords at their sides and all that kind of crap. And I kind of like, I see definitely the appeal of that kind of thing, which is why the character of Ambrose there is holding a sword. But I don't feel like Ansel is a character who needed to convey that kind of thing in this game. So, atypical of a main character, he doesn't use a sword. In fact, he doesn't use a weapon at all. He fights with his fists. And there is an aspect of his character which explains why he doesn't use a sword, even though he does know how to do it. Moving on, the character of Kismet here. Kismet was a character that I had created a little bit later on during development. Figured I needed more characters for the story to take perspective from than just Ansel. His perspective was a little bit too limited in order to convey every aspect of the world that they existed in that I wanted to. So the characters of Kismet and Ambrose were created. Kismet comes from a sort of very different environment than Ansel does. She comes from not a much more unstable world. One where kind of the environment is less hospitable to human life. As a result, her sort of personality is much more cynical of other people. And her dress and clothes and all that sort of show the world that she had come from. Although I'm not particularly happy with the way she is dressed right now, or quite happy with the arrangement of facial features she has. I will be changing this. I've gotten closer to the end design that I want to have with her. We've seen Kismet in earlier episodes of this series, and she had longer hair. Uh, at the time, she had a bit of a lighter complexion, and the shirt she was wearing was pretty much an identical copy of Ambrose's shirt, only with the front of it open a little bit more. I decided I didn't like that, plus it was only a temporary character to begin with, so I reworked her a little bit. This is closer to my uh, original vision of her. She also has a red streak through her hair, which is now shorter, which is actually made out of blood, and it's sort of like a symbol of her having defeated some sort of a foe in her past. She carries a halibut instead of a, instead of a sword, which was my original idea with her. Because, well, it's different, and it seems like something that she'd realistically either have in her time or be able to use or be able to construct. Moving on to the character of Ambrose. Ambrose is somewhat more typical of the kind of character you'd see in this sort of game. He is somewhat smaller, uh, more of a well-rounded fighter rather than like a, a stronger character like Ansel is. And he has somewhat of an effeminate appearance, longer hair, sort of white shirt, which is sort of made to look like it's made out of silk or something like that. And he carries a sword. So it comes from somewhat more of an affluent background, rich family, all that kind of stuff. And his perspective on the world is sort of colored by that because he doesn't really have an incredibly firm understanding of what life is like outside of his sort of sheltered environment that he grew up in. Moving on from Ambrose, we have the character of Romy over here. Romy is a rather smaller individual, wearing kind of heavier armor than the other characters do. Although it's not terribly heavy, it's segmented around the midsection. And I'm probably going to add a little bit more armor across the arms here, but I haven't really decided on that. This is also a, like a second or third incarnation of this character. I'm finally getting to the point where I think it uh, looks a little bit better, kind of close to what I'm looking for. Romy is a soldier, and although she's rather a petite individual, she has kind of a family legacy of soldiers and growing up as a military family, so she felt like that she needed to sort of follow in her uh, family footsteps and become a soldier herself, even if she may not have been best suited for it. As a result, she trained incredibly hard. She's probably the most um, well-trained individual in the group, trains almost religiously in order to be proficient in combat and all that kind of stuff. So as a result, sort of her, the way the gameplay works out with her, is she doesn't have a terribly high offense or defense. 
but she will counterattack whenever she is attacked, something that the other characters can't really do reliably. Sort of making her kind of much more of a defensive character than an offensive character. She won't deal a lot of damage offensively, but she will hurt them defensively. She'll make someone pay if they try to attack her. Also, I have her carrying two smaller knives. She was the original character that I considered having the halberd for, but it, I didn't really like the um, kind of thought of her using that weapon. The knives seem much more appropriate for her because she can be quick with it. Moving over to the left, we have the character of Duke, a character that we had seen in previous episodes, and this is still the same design I have for him. I do plan on replacing this. I don't really like the way it looks or anything like that. His face isn't uh, animated enough or anything like that, so I will be redoing this guy. A big fella. Not a simpleton or anything like that, but he's not very assertive when it comes to his own opinions or any of that kind of stuff. He's the only weapon, the uh, only character here that's not pictured with his weapon. He uses a large war axe or war hammer as opposed to a... Um, as uh, he's not holding a weapon, so you'd think he like punches things, but no, no, he does use a weapon. Not much I really can go on about him right now, only because I do feel the need to redesign the character. But I will say that it's sort of like an unrealistic thing the way he's dressed, because he doesn't wear any sort of armor at all. And I mean, it's I kind of thought about like, do I want these characters to all seem realistic? And the answer is no. It's not a real world. They're not really living in the Middle Ages or anything like that. None of these characters have terribly, like, incredibly realistic ways of dress or acting or anything like that. And of course, like, in a world with this magic and stuff, don't expect everybody to accept it as being real. Plus, it's kind of like, you're up your own ass about that if you obsess over details like this. So the character of Duke is rather severely underdressed for his sort of role as the big Punisher. High offense, high defense, rather slow agility, so he can't really dodge many hits. He won't counterattack very often, and he tends to get tired, because he's a big fellow. That's all I really want to go on about him. Character of Annabelle over on the far left character we have seen before has been redesigned probably more times than you've even seen her fairly small individual but oh also has like these wolverine claw things i'm gonna redesign these they don't really seem to make any sense the way i have them designed here basically like a block of wood with spikes coming out the front of them they're attached you can't see it from here but they're attached around her forearm doesn't make any sense because it'll flop around too much in real life but I'm not too worried about that. But I do want to redesign it a little bit. I pl had to play around a lot with the character design of Annabelle. Because I wanted to sort of... I kind of wanted to strike a balance between her being sort of like a threatening character. And her being someone who could come across as being kind of an innocent looking individual. Because she kind of plays both sides of that. Also, um, I, I had to like... In the whole struggle between being realistic or not being realistic, I wanted to determine how long her hair would be. And I ended up uh, deciding on the point of having her having, like, almost crazily long hair. Way too... I mean, it's physically possible to grow hair that long, obviously, but it's not the kind of thing anybody who runs around through the woods fighting things would ever have. In fact, Ambrose's hair is too long also. I decided to have her on uh, long hair. She's also wearing different clothes than we'd seen her before. She's kind of wearing sort of just just clothes that she picks up with so she could travel with the other group. But in the other in the other times that we've seen her, she has actually been wearing a sort of red dress. And she eventually changes clothes because um, a number of these characters are actually going to, depending on their circumstances, change their clothing through their time in the game. It always seemed kind of strange to me that a character like Cloud Strife would still be wearing a soldier uniform after he supposedly left the company years ago. Why do these characters never change their clothes unless there was some reason for them not to? So that's why I decided to go with here. 
Some of the characters will change their clothes depending on the situation. Annabelle is one of them. Once she's first encountered, she'll be wearing a red dress. She'll eventually change into this because it's a little bit more practical. Other than that, as far as I can say with this character, she's a rather smaller individual. She doesn't wear any kind of armor ever, anything that kind of thing. But uh, her source of her power is almost a kind of supernatural thing. The same thing can be said for the characters of Ansel, Duke, and um, Kismet. Whereas Ambrose and Romy are more like characters who do their things based on their own sort of more natural physicality. That kind of thing. Anyway, those are the six characters I have here. Let's jump over to Blender. And we can take a quick uh, sort of... Oh, geez. The character's hair will probably not render right in this. Especially Annabelle's. Looks terrible. Get a quick little uh, 360 view of all these characters. Oh, man. Look at Duke. He's standing way too far back in his clothes. <laughs> One of the things I had to decide on while I was developing these characters is how much attention to detail I'm going to be going with the character, with the characters themselves. Characters are standing around kind of weird. Their hands are open. Um, the way that the game engine I'm using works is everything has to be in a bitmapped image. Uh, all the graphics are rasterized. And instead of using like pixel art, I'm using 3D graphics that I'm rasterizing and then putting them into the game. As a result, the game engine... Uh, the game engine is also low resolution, so as a result, a lot of the fine details you're going to see here are actually sort of like impossible to see or blended out or something like that. Like, you're not going to be able to see the, all of the rust marks and the scratches and stuff in the chest plate of Romy here. You're also not going to see like weird little details in the tunic of Duke here. All that kind of stuff. Or weird, or little blemishes on their faces, that kind of stuff. You're not going to see all that kind of stuff. Because at best, I'm going to have images appearing on the screen of, at best, maybe 300 by 300 pixels. That kind of stuff. And for the most part, the characters running around on the screen are going to be only about 50 pixels tall and maybe like 20 or 30 pixels wide. At the most. So there's a lot of detail that will simply be lost, and I had to sort of decide on how much of that detail I was going to try and keep. So I kind of, like, had to go and, oh, look, they're standing on nothing and half of them aren't wearing shoes. That's ridiculous. The other half are wearing white shoes. Anyway, that's um, pretty much all I have to say on this subject right now. Shirt looks terrible from here. I'm going to have to sign out here. Thank you for watching, and um, see you next time.